Lesson 12.4a, Representing Algebraic Relationships. We can represent algebraic relationships by using verbal descriptions, tables, and graphs. We can make a table from the verbal description, then make a graph from the ordered pairs in the table. From a graph, we can make a table and write an equation. We learned back in video 12.1b that the data given in a table can be written as ordered pairs of x and y coordinates. Imagine taking this table and then just flipping it so it's vertical. We have 0, 0. We have a 1 for x and a 10 for y and so on. And we can plot these points of these coordinates on a graph. And if that's confusing, that video is linked in the description. Bob can run 14 kilometers per hour, and Dave can run 12 kilometers per hour. Show how the distance each man runs is related to time. For each man, we make a table comparing time and distance. So here's Bob's table. It says he can run 14 kilometers per hour, so that's one hour. And we can complete the table for his data. Here's Dave's table. It says he can run 12 per hour, so we have 1 for 12. So we can make ordered pairs from the information in the tables. These are the ordered pairs for Bob, and these are the ordered pairs for Dave. And for each man, we can make a graph showing his distance, y, as it depends on time, x, plotting points from the tables. So we make a graph for each man, and we plot the points for the x and y values, the x coordinates and the y coordinates, and Bob's equation is y, whatever this value on this scale for distance is, is equal to 14 times whatever the hour is. We've got all of his points plotted here. We've got Dave's graph and all of his ordered pairs, his points plotted here. Each equation shows the distance in terms of time as y in terms of x. We can use the data in the tables to determine which man is running faster by comparing the distances they ran at the same amount of time. In one hour, he ran 14 kilometers, and in one hour, he ran 12. Bob must have run faster. We can use the data in the graphs to determine which man is running faster by the steepness of the lines. So Bob's line is actually steeper by a little bit than Dave's. But for this comparison, it's easier to see who runs faster from the tables because using the graphs, it's diff difficult to compare steepness when they're only slightly different. But if you have good eyes, you can see that this one is not as steep, so he's not running as fast. Sam can run 10 kilometers per hour. Because it's 10 per hour, we know in one hour he runs 10. We can complete the rest of his table. When we plot points and connect them with a line, we can see fractional parts of an hour and fractional parts of a kilometer. If you look at this line, let's take a closer look. We've plotted the points for 1 and 10 and 2 and 20 and 3 and 30, 4 and 40, 5 and 50 because he's going 10 per hour. Well, if we put a point right here at 1 and a half, he would be going 15 miles, and that's correct. So we can also see data beyond what's shown in the table by following the line up to the right. Every location on this line, every place we can draw a point on this line is an ordered pair that is a solution of the equation y is equal to 10x. The y value is equal to 10 times the x value. And it doesn't matter where we plot it on the line. If there were a thousand points on this line, we could pick any one of those thousand points and make an ordered pair, and it would be a solution to this equation. If we have 2 and 20, here's 2 and here's 20. Yep, that's on the line. What about 4 and 2 tenths and 42? 
Well, four and two tenths would be a little bit past the four right here, wouldn't it? And we would go up to 42, and it would be about right here. And that's on the line. That's a solution to the equation. What about 6 and 5 tenths and 65? Well, 6 and 5 tenths would be in between 6 and 7. So we would go up, and then we'd go to 65 between the 60 and 70, and that would put us right here. It doesn't matter where we go on the line, even into hundreds or thousands, it would be a solution if it's a point on the line from the ordered pairs. And we'll discuss this more throughout the rest of this lesson. We need to make sure our x and y values are in the correct order in our ordered pairs, so we will graph them correctly according to the x-axis and y-axis. Just remember, they're in alphabetical order. Okay, we finished the first part of this lesson. We're going to move on to the second part, 12.4b, writing an equation from a graph. So stick with me for the next couple of parts to this lesson, and you'll know all about writing equations from graphs. Have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.